Welcome back to Wedding Crashers University. Today, our wedding film company is out here in New York City shooting a destination wedding and we're gonna go over our top five hacks when it comes to traveling with gear and shooting in a travel setting. Without wasting any time, let's hop into it. Number one, want to talk about condensing your gear. When you're flying with all the gear you might need to shoot a wedding, it's important to make sure that the gear you bring is condensed into just a few bags. This can be different than on a wedding day near your home base where you can throw multiple pieces of gear into the car with no problem. When we travel, we have a few essential cases that tend to fit everything we need. First, we have a case dedicated to just our hardware. This includes all of our tripods and light stands and things that are generally too long and would take up too much space in a standard backpack or Pelican case. For cameras, lights, batteries, and the rest of our gear, we use a Pelican Air 1615. These bags both get checked at the airport and will ride to your destination underneath the plane. Um, in addition, we'll also bring a carry-on and a personal item. I recommend bringing a camera bag as your personal item. This will fit additional gear that might not fit in the Pelican and will be helpful for moving your gear with you on the wedding day. Much better than carrying around um, a, a Pelican case as you navigate venues and hotel rooms. For the carry-on, I recommend a small suitcase for things like clothes and toiletries. Another massive hack when it comes to moving your gear around and putting things in bags and traveling with them, get a tracking device. We use Apple AirTags and put them in every bag that we own. Um, it doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, you are going to want to know where your bag is. If it does get lost, um, and even on a wedding day, if somebody you know snatches your bag or something, it's always a good idea to be able to track that. So yeah, just another little hack when it comes to moving gear. Number two is getting a media badge. When you need to check overweight bags at the airport, you can save a lot of money by presenting a media badge to the check-in clerk. Right now, there are several airlines that will waive your overweight fee if you're checking bags with media equipment and you can present a media badge. Um, at the time we're making this video, United, Delta, American Airlines, and Southwest all have special permissions for people traveling as media. You can make these badges yourself, and we'll link to an article from F-Stoppers that explains this process in a little bit more detail and includes a Photoshop template you can use to customize your very own. All right, next point, try to stay at an Airbnb. This is less of an essential and more of just you know personal preference, but there are several reasons why we prefer staying at some type of rental property over a hotel. First, let's talk about the space itself. With a rental property, you can get very specific as to what type of space you wanna stay at. When you're traveling for work, it is important, it's just nice to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible so you can focus on the job at hand. Especially when traveling with multiple people, it's nice to have the extra space to work, eat, and store equipment that might not be available in a standard hotel room. These spaces also tend to have better amenities, including better Wi-Fi, cooking and dining space, co-working spaces, etc. You'll also be able to have slightly more privacy in an entire property than you might get from just a single hotel room. Now, all of this sounds great, but let's talk about cost. Usually, you'll be able to find a rental property on Airbnb or VRBO for a similar cost to that of a hotel. For example, right now, we're staying at an Airbnb just outside of New York City for about $170 per night, with hotels in the area ranging anywhere from $130 to $350 a night. Number four, when you're traveling, especially to a place that you wanna book more weddings, work with the couple and try to do a pre-wedding video that they can show at their cocktail hour or reception. Here in New York, we're working with a couple to set up just that. When we initially got on the phone with them, we brought up the idea and sent them a little inspiration board of some of the ideas we had in mind. Um, they were super down for the ideas, so we flew out two days before the wedding to shoot with them and have something ready by the time their wedding day arrived. When people saw the video for the first time on the wedding day, the reception was positive beyond my imagination, and we became extremely popular with not only the guests at the wedding, but with the couple themselves. They trusted in our vision for their film even more than they had previously and were down for all of our ideas on the day of their wedding. Um, we also talked with guests from all over the country asking about our company and gave out every single business card we brought with us on the trip. So try this. It works. 
The last massive hack that ended up being so helpful on this trip is bring a third person. Um, on a typical wedding day, we'll only bring two shooters, but when traveling, especially to a place you're unfamiliar with, it can be so helpful to have a third person with you. That person can help with parking, moving gear, working on edits, um, and can act as a third shooter on the wedding day. You never really know when or where you'll need an extra pair of hands on a wedding day, but you'll definitely appreciate it when that time comes. That concludes our five travel hacks that we've kind of come up with while we were out here in New York. If you guys have anything that you guys use when you're traveling with gear, let us know in the comment section below. We want to hear your smart ideas. If you got anything from this video, make sure you give it a like, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Class is dismissed.